Right. So I hope uh, uh, the screen is visible and we are in uh, sales data. Uh, can you confirm that screen is visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Okay, uh, I'm also wonder where to start and how to start because we are in the middle of the midday. So um, I have a couple of things for the third week also. Uh, so in between, I will try to touch base on uh, things what we can do. Right, uh, so I have given you this uh, data just, uh, just uh, taken from uh, one of the US-based uh, database. Um, so don't worry about the data, it is uh, just a table given to you. So that's why at the very beginning of the day, the day one, I said that Excel is um, um, playing a different role. One is uh, mainly it is a um, calculation, right? Mainly it is doing calculations for you. And um, calculation mean it's not mathematical calculation, even the logical checks and other, other uh, tricks uh, you can perform. And also it uh, works as a database because you can store numbers, text, and or arrange it in a table format. So it's uh, working as a database. And also you are in the same platform, that same interface, uh, you are working with the uh, data and then uh, you manipulate or uh, calculate or do some analysis and then present it also in the same platform. So that's where it is said it is uh, most people uh, willing to use excel because otherwise what happens is when you you have database in one and then interfere with um, some M uh, sql or some other programming language and then get the data to one platform and then present it in another platform uh, so there is a, a two, many interconnections are there but here in excel um, uh, you do your, you have your data there. You do your calculation there, and you uh, present your uh, um, analysis in a graph format or tabular format or charts. Um, and uh, that's why it is. Uh, it is more people have uh, feel very um, handy and friendly with uh, Excel. Uh, so today, uh, let's start with this one. Uh, go to this uh, D211, this yellow color tab uh, next to the sales data. And there is uh, some basic uh, uh, formulas I was trying to cover today. Uh, it's very simple one, right? Let's say the first, uh, very first uh, question is, um, find the total sales in rupees. So though it is in uh, dollars in the sales, but uh, doesn't make, don't worry about the units. Uh, find the total sale. Uh, the heading is saying, answer the following based on the data given, inverted comma, uh, the seat name is sales data. So that means you have to use the database as a sales data sheet. So that is sheet uh, adjacent to this worksheet, right? So we here you need to just glance through the data because before you start working with anything, uh, first you have to see the, feel it, right? You need to feel what it is. And then you need to feel what the formats and what are the information there. So you have a header there, so you can glance through the header. Let me highlight also. Uh, right, the headers are given. And um, I purposefully in, um, uh, did some something there. So let's say, for example, I wanted to see how many rows are there. How many rows are there? Can I go like this? What we have learned in the day one. How do we know that uh, how many rows of data is there? Anyone quickly without wasting time? Anybody? How do we how do we know how many rows are there or columns are there? Anyone? You have to speak. Uh, it's an interactive session. Yeah. Right. 
there is somebody in the chat box, uh, control shift down arrow, yes. Uh, you can uh, click on the first the first uh, data, that so is the- Control shift press down. Arrow key. Right, thank you. Uh, control shift down. So first select the very first uh, row, that is uh, row number two, and then you press control shift down. So control down means it's jumping to the next uh, uh, non-blank cell, right? Next non-blank cell. Uh, if you uh, press shift also, then it's uh, select everything. If you want to select entire, entire column, then what you do is select the first one and control shift down. So when you say control shift down, uh, that's mean you have selected everything, right? So in this case, uh, it says count is 2000. In your bottom bar, you can see here, uh, the count is uh, 2000. There are average and sums are there, which is not relevant to my question now. Uh, so the count is 2000, that means 2000 data. There is a, if I want to go back to the, the very top, uh, what I have to do is column, column up key, column up key. So I went to there. Uh, say for example, there is a data missing. So I'm purposefully putting this one. The number 10 is missing, right? So when I uh, start from number one, control shift down, uh, what is our expectation? It will go only up to nine, right? It goes only up to nine because there is a blank, because there is a blank. So that doesn't mean this database has only nine rows. Right, it doesn't have nine rows, but there is a there is a problem in the data. There are some missing values, but uh, the data is not limited to nine. So, to be safe on your side, what you can do is keep uh, pressing the down key so that you go to the next uh, next set of data, next set of data, next set of data until you reach the the whole Excel sheet. Right. Then you you select entire row in the in the um, some, um, Excel sheet. Then you come back upside, right? So after you reach, you press the Control Up key so that you reach the last row. Let me let me show you. I am pressing twice today because there are only two. But you have to in your real database. You don't know how many missing data, so you need to keep pressing until we go down. So let's say I'm pressing two, and when I press three, it goes there. Even I don't know whether there is more than 2000. So I am just keep on pressing. And you can see here, you have reached the Excel maximum. That is uh, somewhere, uh, how much is uh, 1,048,000 rows. So we have reached the bottom. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to press key so that I goes to the last row of the data, last row of the data, right? So that is uh, 2000. So there are several ways to do. If you have similar table, you don't need to worry anything. And uh, instead of selecting, you have some, um, you can select uh, the column, the header. The columns are there in the top. You can select the column so that uh, I am selecting the A, right? Without selecting any rows. I'm just selecting A. What will happen? The entire row is selected. Now, entire row is selected. Now go to this, uh, go to your bottom bar and see how many counts are there, 2,000. Uh, still, this is okay. This is okay. But the problem is the it is counting only the numbers. But your database, say for example, let me click, um, let me click, uh, yeah, B. When I click B, it is counting 2001. It is counting 2001. Why? Because the data has text also. Data has text also. So then Excel will count uh, regardless of the numbers and text. But here what happened is uh, mostly the numbers. So Excel is treating this column as a number. So um, using this one is a little bit of a tricky, so we have to be careful, right? Because how is it a count A or count A is the matter, right? So that's why um, to be sure, to be sure, better to have uh, uh, this one so that we are sure that uh, 2,000 calls are there, right? 
um, that is about the navigation between the data set, right? So you can go, so if I want to go to the most extreme left, uh, control right key and control left key and so on. So the, how do you move here and there? Then uh, there is another uh, navigation uh, you can do is um, say at the same time, for some reason, at the same time, you want to see the, the very first row as well as the very last row. Then what we do is we split the sheet, we split the Excel sheet into two parts. So in older version, there was a split uh, tool here. But uh, in the new one, we don't have. So you need to go to the view. Uh, you need to go to the view. And then uh, under the Windows tab, you have this split. So when you put the split, you can see here there is a small two arrows are there. So when you select there, you can bring your data into two splits. So there is a horizontal bar. So you can have two splits. So now you can see the top one and the bottom one at the same time, right? Top one and the bottom at the same time because we have split at the window. Now, if you select the first row and the last row with the shift key, last row with the shift key, uh, that will tell you how much, right? So here you can see the count is 2000 R into one column, 2000 R into one column, right? So there are 2000 rows are there though there are blank cells, but the total number of rows are 2,000, right? Uh, if you don't want this lib, double click on this one, uh, that vanishes, right? Okay, uh, that's about the navigation uh, in the Excel. I think the uh, count is 2,000 because of the blank cell, because of the blank cell. Ah, yes, yes. Ah, yeah, here we have missed the 10, right? Yeah, there's a note. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, the count is becoming uh, 2000 because uh, we have deleted this one. So now if I select the entire column, uh, it's 2001, including the, the header, including the header. So if you remove the header, uh, the count is 2000. Thank you for that. Uh, right, okay. Uh, so now uh, let's me go back to the question. What we want is the total sale. So we need to find out where the sale is, right? So let's see, search for sale. All right, here. So this is your sale value. This is your sale value, right? That is the column R. Column R is the sale value. So this is the one we need to calculate, right? This is the one we need to calculate. So what we have to calculate is we have to uh, take the entire range from start to bottom, right? So let me select the first one and uh, put the control shift down, control shift down. It will select uh, enteros, right? Enteros. And if you go down here in, at the bottom bar, status bar, you can see the summation is given there. That is... Um, 457,898.639. That is, uh, you have done it manually. But when you do the Excel uh, calculation, you need to put it in a formula, right? So we have last class, we have studied that uh, you need to go for a summation, right? Sum. You can put auto sum. Here, there is no data. So auto sum will not work even if you put, uh, because Excel search for adjacent data, uh, there is no data. So it doesn't show anything. So you have to put it by yourself. So let me start manually. Sum equal sign SUM sum. Where is my data is not in the same sheet. My data is in other sheets. So I go to the sales data and then I select the very first one. That is, uh, let me say first one. After selecting the first one, I'm going with the control shift down control shift down. So everything is selected. Now you close the bracket and enter. So this is the total sale, 457,000, et cetera, right? Uh, so you can see some uh, information here. When we deal with equation within the same cell, 
with sorry within the same sheet we don't have this kind of an information but when we are taking the data from the sheet it takes the relevant uh, information also the excel is automatically taking sales data the day this range is uh, referred from sales data so in a quotation mark uh, the sale data and the exclamation and the, then the range name is there r22 r2001 r22 r2001 so this is the formula pattern right now if you want an average usually you can do average write the average and then go to that cell and do that so let me show that and then come back to it if you want average what we do is average start the bracket and go to sale and then do the same again uh, go to the first one and control again if i'm faster let me know uh, i hope uh, you also working with me um, control shift down so that uh, you selected the entire uh, entire column and then uh, press enter so now you have done this one but um, usually uh, if you know the formula and pattern uh, usually i don't do this one. May, let me delete this the same thing but let me let me delete this usually what i do is um, i copy the formula so you once you select your uh, formula cell uh, one in the formula bar you will find it uh, your your formula what it is so what i do is i just copy this one select the formula and then copy what is copy control c right so i copy by control c right then just escape then go to your cell where you want to put your formula and then paste it here if you enter the same number will come right because the same term formula same range so the number must be same but only the difference is instead of the sum my formula is changing as average right because why i am telling this one you don't need to go here and there all the times if you know the reference correctly right so for the first time we went there uh, to calculate for one after that you just copy and paste now the next one one c uh, they are looking for the maximum sale again i will put the same formula which i copied and then change it to now maximum what is maximum m a you can see the selections are there it's about the second one maximum m a x and enter so the maximum value is this one again if you want minimum just uh, paste your formula what you have copied already and then delete the sum instead of sum you put minimum m i n and then enter the formula enter so the minimum va sale value is only 1.08 is that clear to you done sir can you tell me again uh, about average yeah uh, so this one uh, you got it right this yes, uh, yeah so after that what i do is uh, because rather than going here and selecting the entire cell because the same data same column same data we are dealing with for the other questions right so what i do is um, instead of uh, navigating for to this sheet and coming to this sheet and so on what i do is i copy this one so i copy this one you can put the control c for copy or you right click and copy whatever the copy method you can put copy and then escape so because that formula i don't want to edit anything so escape or enter or whatever so the formula is remain same then here what i do is uh, i go and paste it i go and paste it there uh, the same formula which i copy but now it is with the sum right sum say where is from sales data the range is r2 to 2001 but now i don't want the total sum i want the average so instead of the sum formula i'm replacing with the average formula right 
So now the entire formula changed uh, because uh, it is talking about average, but the same data. Correct. So this hassle of taking this uh, data from other sheets, I have avoided by copy paste the formula. Is that okay, so Yeah. Right. So this is uh, this is one. Now let me go back to the sale data. Let me go back to the sale data, or maybe take a small example here. Um, let's say, okay. Let's say I have a, a header A and then uh, one, two, three, right? One, two, three. Just for an example. Eh? Uh, now, uh, if I sum this um, everything, so let me sum this, including A. Let me sum this, including A. What will be the answer? Will be an error or there will be an answer? When you do sum with the alphabets, that means text, uh, this calculation will omit that. So alphabets will be omitted, taken as a zero, and you will get uh, three plus three, six, right? So having text is not a problem in this uh, range because Excel will automatically avoid uh, that uh, alphabets. So because of that property, instead of selecting this, um, say for an example, in this, uh, in this sales data, say this sale data for 2000, uh, 2001 is this one. So you have a header and certain values are there. There are 2000 entries. Uh, say uh, one other uh, year, say the 2020, 2020 sale data may have only 1000 data. Uh, then 2000, uh, say 18 uh, or 19, it may have different number of uh, rows entry. So every time you use your data, you need to carefully select where, where it is starting and where it is ending and so on, right? So instead of that, there is an alternative method or an easy method you can do, but only problem is you need to be careful about your data. Like say, say for example, in this case, you have a sales as a uh, header, and then you have all the data uh, entered into the column, but there is no any other numbers. There is no any other numbers other than sales. Uh, summation of the sales or any other key, you know, uh, any other notes or anything. So that's mean we are safe um, other than this header, other than this header, everything is a number, which is a sales. If you're sure about that database, then instead of going through all these hustles, instead of going through all these hustles, what you can do is um, you can use the without the range row numbers, we, you can tell the Excel to take entire column. You can, you can tell the uh, Excel to go entire column. Say for an example, in this case, what I have uh, by manual calculation from here to here, I have got the answer six for this calculation, right? So let me put uh, one other sum. Let me put one other sum, but instead of I select this one, this range, I select the entire column J, entire column J. That's mean everything in the column is uh, taken summation. So let me close the bracket and enter. Again, it is gives the same answer, why? because there are some A and one and two, there is no any other numbers. So if I want to get uh, the entire column summation, you don't need to have uh, any reference um, there. You just put it, um, uh, sorry, instead of the range, you can put J to J. That's mean you're, you're taking the entire column, right? So you can do the same problem in this way. You can do the same problem in this way. Let me, let me put change the formula. So what I will do is summation. If you are comfortable, I will copy paste this formula. Let me copy paste this formula, copy and put it here, put it here. Instead of this one, I delete all these numbers. Are you okay with that? 
sum where the data is sales data. The range is there is no range. I want the entire R column, so R to R and enter. Right, so you will get the answer. And the same you can do here. What I will do is I will copy entire thing and then check uh, because now I can drag. Now I can drag because the range is not changing. So I will put average. And then put uh, maximum. And then put minimum. So you get uh, this one. The advantage in this one is we don't use any uh, row reference. Uh, so entire column is taken. So that um, whether you have 10 data, 15 data, 100 data, a formula will work, right? So otherwise uh, you have to keep these formulas um, updated whenever there is a different sheets, right? So, um, if you want to do a similar, okay, first finish this one and then come back, right? Okay. Um, so now uh, let's go to the method one. Sorry. Sorry, different set of question, right? Different set of question, uh, then method one. Now you have taken the total average, uh, sorry, total, the entire sale average, entire sale maximum, entire sale minimum, right? Now, shall we move? Do you want time or do you want any clarification? Can you, somebody confirm me whether, can we move on? Okay, sir. Can we move? Right, these are the formulas what we have written there. Right. Um, okay. Then 2A, find the total sales to the customer. Find the total sale it's also a total sale, but now total sale with some condition. What is the condition? Sales to the customer, Anthony Johnson. Anthony Johnson. So now there is a, a bit of a condition is coming, right? Let me say two things I have to look for. One is the sale. Second one is a customer. Sale, I know by now uh, it's in the column R, right? Sale is in R. But then now I need to check where the customer is. Let me go back to the uh, database and then uh, go to the header where you need to search for customer. Right, here it is the customer. Customer name is under column G. Customer name is under column G. Uh, Yeah, customer name is under column G. I think I have made a mistake over there. I have given you some hint over there, but then uh, I think I made a mistake there. Uh, it must be column, not J. J is a city, right? J is a city. Customer name is under G. Customer name is under column G. Right. So find the total sale from customer Anthony, uh, uh, Anthony Johnson, uh, the sales value. So what I have to do is I need to get the sum. I need to get the sum, but there are some condition, right? When you put equal sign and sum, there are enough formulas are coming. What are the available formulas in Excel is coming. Sum is there, some if is there, some ifs are there single condition, multiple condition. So if you want to sum based on a one condition, you can use if. If you want to go for more than one condition, you can use some IFS, ifs, conditions, right? So in this case, I have only one condition. So let me choose sum if. So double click on that. Then you get the sum if. 
then the helping line is coming at the bottom that is some if then you select the range right so what range you want to what is the range we want to check here we want to check the customer range right so we need to check, check the customer range and what is the criterion to be met the customer name must be anthony johnson anthony johnson so customer range then the criterion then the last one is which column to sum which column to sum there are three inputs you have to put it for this formula right so first one is a sum if so let me select the range uh, go to sales data and uh, customer name is uh, under g and then control shift down you select the entire data then you put the comma now the criteria criteria is anthony johnson put it very correctly i have given the name in the next one uh, there it is sorry this sales data i have selected now i need to select this one right uh, actually name that is uh, f9 comma uh, then i need to go for the sales range that is r column from the first one to the bottom you select the r and then enter so what happens is uh, some if sales data give me a minute sorry uh, what is that uh, yeah uh some if first one is the range what is the range uh that is the um, sales data name range customer name range right g22 g2001 then it comes to uh, my file where i am working so i don't need to have these all d22 blah 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 so i can just put f9 so i can delete this one so f9 that is this one then uh, sales data r22 r2001 where the sale is there so this one is the this one is the customer name this one is a sales data customer name and the sales data then you enter so it gives uh, this much right so for your easiness i have uh, put the name the anthony johnson here so that uh, if you put any spelling mistake sometime what happens is uh, it won't come say let me do a mistake purposefully uh, instead of referring uh, f9 let me search for um, anthony johnson but let me cut the j there right let me cut the j there then uh, your answer is zero because uh, within the name uh, a customer name there is uh, no name with uh, what you have entered so there is a mistake in your name so if you put j there then it will be uh, searching for that name so if your name is mistaken uh, then the it will search for the database and uh, it says uh, there is no customer like that so the sale is zero right okay uh, so let me put it back to the cell reference rather than the name okay right uh, is that uh, clear use of ifs yes no hello yes sir right then um, let me the second question two point b is slightly twisted what is the twist okay 
find the total sales. sales. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we couldn't hear you. Sir, will you show yeah. the function? Will you show that function again? Ah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, this one. Uh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Right. Okay, now this question is slightly modified. Find the total sales to the customer, Anthony, but the surname is not there. Right? Surname is not there. So it can be Anthony Johnson or it can be Anthony anyone. So I don't care about the surname, but the first name must be Anthony. Right? So let me copy the formula here. Copy, uh, control C, or you right click and copy whatever. And then, and then you put your formula here for the second one. Right. Now, uh, this is for Anthony, right? So this is for Anthony. So I, I don't want uh, this should be Anthony. It is must be different. So let me say earlier it was Anthony Johnson. So let me say Anthony Johnson so within the double quote. Sorry, within the double quote, Anthony Johnson. So the answer is same. But uh, do I need Anthony Johnson? No. So I need only Anthony. But if I put only Anthony, what would be the answer? Zero. Because there is nobody called Anthony. Always there will be a surname is added. So the, the, the formula will search for a full name without any spelling mistake. Uh, then uh, the answer is zero because nobody with Anthony. There is Anthony Johnson is there, Anthony somebody, something else is, will be there. So uh, Anthony alone will get a zero. So uh, it's called wildcard in, in, in text space. So you can use some tricks and um, here. So let me put the things here. Uh, that is, uh, if you are using a asterisk mark, if you are using an asterisk mark here, So this uh, asterisk mark uh, in the in the text uh, operations, asterisk mark is representing any character. So asterisk mark is uh, representing any character. Any character in the um, character in the um, character in the uh, uh, Unicode. That means. It can be alphabet, it can be numbers, it can be symbols, anything. But uh, the Unicode character will be represented by asterisk. So uh, this, if you can uh, just keep it in mind, in search functions, even in your Google search and so on, sometimes not Google search exactly. Uh, if you want to search for a file in your folder, if you want to search a file in a folder, but uh, you don't know the exact file name, but it starts with project or it starts with assignment or it starts with some date. Uh, then you do is uh, what you do is you just put um, uh, what you remember. Say, I don't know what is in front of the text. So I put an asterisk and then I say project, right? So if I put the both side asterisk, uh, before the project, uh, there are some te text can be, after the project also, there can be some text, but Anything with uh, containing project will come to your search. So that is the meaning of this asterisk. So you can use that here because you are searching here, Anthony, and then star mark, right? Anthony star mark. So you can put the star also. 
do we need to use uh, let me let me check put the star mark and check now when you put andoni and a star asterisk mark then what will search for it's not search for andoni andoni anything right andoni anything the star is representing any character at any number right so andoni star will give you around 16000 sorry 1600 and uh, this one so earlier we had only 500 so that's mean there are some more andonis there right some more andonis they are in the database so i don't worry but uh, answer is there is that clear hello yes sir yes sir okay Right, so let's uh, continue. Find the average sales by subcategory. So earlier we were talking about the customer name. Uh, now we have a subcategory, product type, called tables. So any kinds of tables, right? Uh, so the same formula, same formula, only my range may be different, right? So same formula, let me put control up. To go to the header and then see ah, there, there is a subcategory so subcategory is called p subcategory is under the column p so subcategory yeah subcategory is under column p uh, so what i have to do is again i will uh, copy this formula right copy this formula and paste it here and paste it here what i will do is i will search for sales data but not column g i will search for column j uh, sorry column p where the subcategory is there so i will change the g to p and then what i am searching for tables right but i am searching for tables so let me put tables and sales data doesn't change so criterion change uh, criterion range is uh, p column p what i have what i am searching is table and uh, what i need to sum is uh, sales right so i think uh, the answer will be uh, around 5000 uh, sorry 53000 something which we have made a sale uh, by a table right Similarly, the question two uh, D. Uh, ah, sorry, sorry. Carefully read the question. Uh, the two C is not about the sum; it is about the average, right? So we are using a different formula now. Uh, average. When you say average, there are some functions: average, average a, average if, and average ifs. So now I am going to use average if. And the formula, when you enter the average sale by table. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, there's a chat message about the average. Thank you for that. Uh, then the 2D is also average sale, but uh, not by the category uh, where it happened. So it's asking for the city, California, uh, the sales. So again, uh, let me copy paste the same formula and uh, put it here and then change the, uh, I need to check where it is, right? So I need to find out the state. There is the state uh, here. State is under column K. State is under column K. So I will change the P to K. So now I am searching the K column, and what I have to search is now California, California, and sales is not changing. So enter. So that's mean only two hundred and ten uh, in California, right? Is that clear? You can add on any number of conditions uh, if you want. 
using IFS. Probably we will see whether how we use the IFS later, right? Uh, so we have used the without the if condition, uh, sum, average, maximum, minimum. And then here we have used uh, all the sum and averages with the condition. Here, the same question, same question, but then uh, we would like to use a different formula, right? So let me introduce a new one. That is, uh, how do we use the sum product for this one? So, or maybe shall I talk about sum product and then come back later? Mm, yeah. Right. Let's go to this uh, D2 uh, 1.2 uh, sheet. Right. So here, um, there is a simple invoice uh, type of table is given. Product uh, ID is there. Uh, unit price is given. And the quantity bought is here. So you can find out the total for each product, right? Uh, 50 rupees into three quantities. So you will get uh, 150 rupees. Similarly, you will multiply this and this and this and this and, and then you get the uh, total value right so after you calculate this one you get the total value can we do that okay uh, do it before i mean do it while i'm doing uh, equal sign what i want to do is 50 into 3 right 50 into 2 50 into 3 150 then i am dragging this one up to here so it's calculate the uh, multiplication of 5 into 2 20 into 4 and etc and then you add the um, uh, uh, sum by manually. You can put sum, or you can, uh, or you can uh, insert the auto sum from your home ribbon here. You, I hope you can see my cursor, the auto sum here, or you can put the shortcut key uh, that is uh, Control Plus, uh, sorry, Alt Plus equal, right? Alt Plus equal. So you will get the sum. Uh, you just check the range is correct. If it is uh, correct, uh, you enter. Then the answer is uh, 330 rupees, right? Your total bill is 330 rupees. But sometime I don't want to do all these multiplication and et cetera, et cetera. I want quickly the answer. I want the total bill value. So I don't want any calculation over there. You multiply, you sum, and uh, I, don't, I don't worry. I don't, I don't care. I don't want the steps. So suppose I don't want any of this calculation. I don't want any of this calculation. I want the answer, right? Sometime you may need that. So without adding additional column and then multiply everything there and so on, instead you can use a different function. It is called sum product. When you, when you type sum, there are some, some if, some IFS, multiple condition. The fourth one is some product. Fourth one is some product. Double click on that one. We are going to use a some product. And when you say some product, uh, the hint is given here as an array one, array two, array three, and array four, right? Array one, array two, array three, array four. So you have to, that's mean what is the meaning is we are going to sum we are going to sum but after product that's mean after multiplying right after producting the arrays after producting the arrays so my first array is uh, unit price right my first array is unit price then my second array is quantity so i want to multiply this array by this array and then get the summation. So multiplying and summing, summing both happening together, both happening together. So what I will do is I will put the uh, bracket close and enter. You will get the answer quickly. So instead of doing all these calculation, here you can use um, some product uh, function, right? So some product, uh, this range and this range, right? Uh, it's in, sometimes it may be a new formula to you, but it's a useful formula, right? Some product. Is that uh, clear to you all? 
yeah. yeah right so this array can be this uh, the word array array is uh, usually a matrix or a table or a box or whatever it is so this array can be a column array something like this right so array can be in the column form or array can be in a in a, a row form or it can be in a it can be in a table form or a matrix form right so this also array this is also an array this is also an array right even a single cell can be an array but then uh, no meaning for using a single cell as an array it's a cell right so array mean is a multiple multiple entries in a one uh, variable multiple entries in a one variable usually this array usually this array probably you might have used in uh, a level um, matrix form um, like one comma two comma three comma four comma five it's an array right it's an array so meaning is uh, yes you have one two three or one two three whatever the form you these all are arrays right so this uh, sum product is uh, usually uh, meaning is uh, these also are arrays right so you can have so why i am saying this one not necessary to have uh, array as a column and rows but then uniformity must be there so what i am saying here uniformity is let me say um, let me say do you know random number in excel let me say because uh, why i am saying this one i want to create a random just arbitrary numbers right so let me go for random number so we are random between random between uh, one and uh, sorry one and ten, nine right so it give you a random number to you then you have this one then copy this one and uh, put it here another set of random number then copy all and paste it as a value here paste it as a value here now your formula has gone everything is a number so i want to name this as an array one uh, let me say w1 and uh, then there's another array so I'll name it uh, a and b name it a and b uh, similarly you can have uh, some set of uh, random number random between random between one and nine and you have some other numbers here right okay let me have it like this and copy and put it uh, some other numbers copy and paste it as a value so that no more numbers uh, sorry no more formula uh, it will be a fixed number so let me call this a b and this one is c and d right so now uh, these are uh, these are row uh, row arrays right these are row arrays in other words uh, you can see uh, these are um, one into how many rows uh, six right so these are one into six one into six array similarly this one is also one into six array and uh, here this will be um, sorry here This one is So for the disturbance, I think okay. Now he's here. Okay, fine. Sorry. Okay, sir, thank you. Please continue. Yeah. Some product. Some product. What I want is 
a into c a into c do you think it's possible because a is a different dimension one into six c is seven into one I, the arrays are not matching right the arrays are not matching so if you enter uh -uh. some product right uh how it's taking let us check Eighteen into four, eighty, eighteen forty-five nine. A into C. Array J, array J. What sort of calculation it is doing? Uh, some product. Eighteen forty five nine. Uh, something, something wrong. What I am doing here, but anyway. Uh, I will come back to you this on, uh, usually it should not be the case because this one is a column array, sorry, the row array, this one is a column array. So it cannot be, there is no meaning for multiplying. And uh, this one is a size of six and this one is size of seven. So it should not be. Let me check this. Uh, right. So let me go back to the equal uh, dimension. So let me say this um, array calculation uh, made uh, A, array A is given by this one, array B is given by this one. So it's a two by two matrix and two by two matrix. So basically the meaning is uh, what I want is uh, one into five, two into 10, three into 15, four into 20. If I want to type that uh, manually, uh, you need to type like this. So you need to refer the cells like uh, in Excel. So it's a troublesome job, right? So using a sum product, uh, you just you can put it uh, sum product, sum product. Then put the array first, first array, then the second array, and then close it. Uh, you will get 150, right? So that's an answer by manual. Also, that's an answer. That's correct, right? Uh, so basically, the sum product meaning is you multiply one array with another array and get the summation. So let me go back to the previous question. Let me go back to the previous question here. We are using the sum product in a different way. You are using a sum product in a different way. Say for example, what you want is a total sale, total sale with the customer name, Anthony, right? Customer name, Anthony Johnson. So what I will do is sum product, some product, right? My first array, my first array, one of the array is a sale, right? One of the array is a sale. So let me go back to sale and then select the sale, right? So that is the sale array is there, right? Now I'm going to multiply that with another array. What is that array? That array is um, customer name, right? Customer name, customer name, customer name here, right? So I'm going to multiply that with here. So let me select control shift down so that then their range is selected, right? And uh, close this one and enter, right? Close this one and enter. If I just enter, it will take the entire names, entire names. Anyway, I will just enter now. So it must be equal to the total sum, right? 
there is no difference it will give the total sum total sum is how much uh, somewhere around 450 something right sales value sales value why sales data into you can use more than 8192 8, characters in the microsoft report. okay that is a different story uh what is the mistake we are doing? This is the sales data. Okay. This is the name, right? So let me call this Anthony. That must be equal to Anthony. Okay. Sales Anthony. Right. If I don't put the total sale must become right. I don't know why it is. If I don't put the condition over there, I don't put the condition over there. I know there is no condition. So yeah. So now uh, this uh, sales value. This sale, sales value is an array of uh, different cells, right? There are 2,000 numbers are there, 2,000 numbers are there. But then that we are trying to calculate, I will, I will tell you the logic of this uh, formula. First one, you will get the total summation, sorry, the total sale value. Here, you will get one and zero, one and zero. So whenever there is a condition match, uh, you will get one. If the condition fails, you will get zero. So when you have your condition fails mean, you get zero. The zero into that value, then you go to the sum uh, that, uh, that uh, eliminated. One into that sum will be get summation. So that's why this conditional format, sorry, the conditional sum and conditional counts, you can use this sum product for that. So when you want summation, you can use this uh, uh, logical function. Instead of using if conditions or any other, uh, you can use this uh, sum product. So what the sales name, the customer name must be Anthony Johnson. So I'm putting Anthony Johnson. And then now I'm entering, uh, will give you the 666 uh, the customer value, right? You can add, uh, Say for an example, the next question. Let me copy this one and put it there in the second one. Similarly, what we have done earlier, what I want is Anthony. So I will delete this one and put it in an uh, inverted comma as a, as a, a text and I add the asterisk and close the inverter comma, then some product, the sales value we are adding and uh, with the condition, uh, now uh, same, right? Customer, yes, so G is not going to change. Only the name is uh, Anthony Star, right? Uh, what happens here? Anthony. Sales value Anthony. I don't know whether the star is not working here. Cannot be right. Should be right.
same column, same column we are using with Andoni star. Mm -hmm. Star. This must be similar to this one, right? Anyway, probably this uh, use of star may not be working with product, some product, let me check. Right, uh, let's go to this uh, average one. Anybody? Is there any problem in uh, close brackets? No, the bracket close bracket started here and closed here, right? Okay, so no. What we can do is we can check by reducing the number. Let me check. Um, let's go to only five, and this one also only five, and. Uh, now, if I check this value, if nine falls, 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 falls. Sorry, Antonio, we may not get within that one, right? Let me let me come back to that. Uh, then the average, similarly, I uh, know. Average, you cannot put it in the sum product. So, uh, because we are we are not getting the total no. So this uh, average functions, you, you may not be able to use uh, sum product. So this one, these two, you have to go to this uh, if conditions. Uh, sum, whenever you want the total or a sum, then you can use either this one or this one. It's a very useful function, uh, the sum product. So for example, let me put, um, let me combine these two category. We want to find uh, Anthony Johnson. Let me combine this Anthony Johnson, sorry. Anthony Johnson and also let put another one uh, subcategory as yes, uh, by the subcategory of uh, by the subcategory of this one. So by the subcategory of tables, let me add both together. Find the total sales to customer, uh, customer Anthony Johnson by, by the subcategory of tables. So you are adding two conditions over there, right? Now let uh, first uh, first we will use ifs condition. So let me put uh, some ifs i f s why there are two conditions. Some if some range is uh, the sale value. Some range is the sale value. Select the entire row, and then the next one is the criteria range. Criteria range is there are two criteria. You can see criteria range one and the criteria, then criteria range two and the criteria two. Similarly, you can add any number of criteria. So here, there are two criteria we are going to use. One is the customer name. That is, uh, that is, that is here. So customer name, and this is the range, and then the criteria. Criteria is, uh, Johnson, okay. Anthony Johnson, let me put uh, later, Anthony Johnson. And then the next criteria is by uh, city, by city, where is that? City, city, right? 
So we have given the sale range as the sum range and the criterion as in this one and the city as this one. So city name is California, right? Right, so sum range, criteria one, criteria, criteria two, criteria. So only two criteria is there. I will put it there. So you will get zero anyway, uh, because Anthony name is not correct. Uh, what we will put is Anthony. Anthony, Anthony name. Right, sales G. What is this by category? Tony Johnson. Anthony Johnson, sales California. California. Spelling is correct, right? California. Y value. Sum is. Sum range is sales, correct. Uh, then sales range is the name range. Name range. Name criteria is Anthony Johnson, correct. Uh, sales date. Uh, J2. J2 is uh, city. So G2, 2001. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you. Data is not matched, right? 2001, 2001. Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, so, unfortunately, Anthony Johnson is in California. Uh, <laughs> let me use uh, California. So, let me let me sort this one and check whether so under the data tab uh, you can filter it and under the city under the city i remove everyone and look for california uh, california where it is sorry not country, uh, city. There it is. Oh, there is no city name California here. But earlier we got no state. Right, right, right. So instead of J, we use the K because we use the state. Uh, instead of J, put the K. Now, if you go back to K and then search for California, yes, you get California, right, within California, within California, we don't have Anthony, so maybe we will search for something else, shall we arbitrarily choose the first one, or maybe this one, Eric, filter out, go back, and search for Eric, Right, so you will get some data, right? So this is, uh, you are using if condition. This one you are using if conditions, I if condition. Uh, if you use the same for some product, if I use the same uh, question with the sum product, what I will do is equal sum product, sum product, the first array, first array is the sales array. Right, what I have selected is a sale array. 
and then uh, what I want to have a criterion is, uh, can I copy this one? Copy and paste it there. So I need to have the second array that is um, name range G, right? Name range G, right? So this is the first array, a strict into sales data, this one, that must be equal to um, Eric or something, right? We will, we, will, we will change this one later. Eric. That must be equal to Eric into the second condition is um, sales data, K value. K2 into K 2001, that must be equal to California. California. Right? Close the bracket. Close the bracket. So you have uh, three arrays. One is a sales array. Second one is a name array, but uh, with the equal mean is true or false, right? So it will be zero or one. Then the sales data K mean is a state. Again, it's uh, equal to California mean if it is satisfied uh, one, otherwise zero. So this, this array will give you zeros and ones. Again, this arrow will give you zeros and ones. Uh, then you multiply that with the sales. So wherever both conditions are satisfied, wherever both conditions are satisfied, you get one. Otherwise, this will be one, this will be zero, so cancel so. Or oh, this one is uh, so one and uh, name is zero, then cancel so. So both conditions satisfy, your sale value, value value will be sum, right? That is the logic of the sum product. If you enter that, uh, then what we want is the Eric, the name. We will change the name to Eric, full name. So the function work, but here what we use is, uh, use is sum product. From a data, from a data, if you want to extract some summary into a single cell, always this uh, IFS or some product is the easiest way. Uh, some people used to work with, um, some people we used to work with a pivot table. We will be uh, try to cover next time if time permits. So instead of do doing this one, what you can do is you extract the data. You first extract the data using a method three. Method three, what people do is uh, you extract the data. Extract the data what you want. So we say sub data. So extract the data using pivot table. I'm not, um, no, everybody has different opinion. I'm not um, recommending that because that is an additional work for you, right? So there is a lot of data, but then you need to create a pivot table somewhere within the sheet, or you need to create a new sheet with the pivot table, and then you look for a data and bring the, you, what you want is some value, right? Uh, so you do the pivot table to calculate and then bring the data here back to your, uh, the original place. So it's a hassle. In a way, I, I feel that is a hassle. So if you know the correct tool, uh, you can easily do uh, without going here and there, without going here and there, right? So um, let me ask uh, among yourself, like uh, let's say this is uh, method one and method two. So I, or maybe say, a and B, A and B, A is the IFS uh, condition, if conditions, second one is the sum product condition, which one you like after knowing both? Do you have any any preference over there or both okay to you? 
Okay, some people say IFS. Yeah, because IFS is a straightforward. But this some product has an advantage in doing once you familiarize with this one. Uh, and some product has its own advantage. Um, writing, I mean, uh, writing equation. Even you can uh, you can do some uh, tricky things uh, in some product uh, when it comes to a very advanced level, uh, advanced uh, applications. Uh, we will talk about that later. Right. Uh, okay. So we have done this one. Right. Uh, let's move on to the new one, uh, which is uh, again under the data. So under the data tabs, you have uh, several options. So under the data category, you have this uh, one function called VLOOKUP function, right? Uh, which is commonly used and um, uh, it's a popular one also. Uh, let's look, talk about the lookup function. Lookup function is say, Point three three centimeter raised to four, and that's done. Now we've successfully calculated. Um, lookup function is say you have a data, right? You have a data, and you want to bring some uh, information to another data, right? So you have a table here, and set of information is here, and uh, you want to bring one of the data depends on the entry here. Right, what you put here, then the entire row has to be different, right? Entire information has to be different. So it's a connected tables, right? Two data are connected, right? Say for an example, I want to put a barcode here. It's a very troublesome bar barcode, right? So yeah, I don't know whether it's a barcode or a unique code or whatever it is. Uh, so some some unique number for a different products, pen drive, desktop, laptop. So some company has uh, created their um, system. So let's say this is the barcode number. And uh, once your device is scanning the product, uh, then that comes here. That comes here. So we don't have a luxury of connecting that device to here. So let me uh, manually put some numbers. Let me manually put some numbers. Let me say this number, right? So let me say when I am scanning uh, the product in the, in, a, in the counter, uh, that that gives you this number, right? That gives you this number. Right? So it gives you this number. Now, based on this number, I want the item name because when you're printing your bills, uh, you need to have item name. No barcode is doesn't uh, doesn't sense for the customers. So you need to print the name of the item. You need to print the price of that item. How much you have? They have purchased you that you will enter, and then the subtotal will calculate it, right? So in this case, that means based on a number, based on an entry in another table. If you want to fill these uh, cells, then the useful formula is the look lookup function. So what is the lookup function is? We look from another table. So we look up. We look up. Right? So when you say we look up, the help file is coming there. First one is a lookup value. What you are looking for? What you are looking for? You are looking for a barcode number. Right? So this is the one you are going to search. Where you are going to search in this table. Right? Where you are going to search in this table. So when you search search in this table, what you have to do is you need to select your searching table. So the second one is table of array, right? The table array. So what I'm going to give table array as this one, right? Table array as this one. Then when I put the comma, the third input value what is asking is column index. In your table, in your table what you have selected, uh, the item number, uh, forget about the item number for now. Uh, let me go to the unit price. So if I want to get the unit price, a column, the selected table has two columns. Column one is the one I am searching. Column two is the one I am uh, I'm looking for. So let me say column two, column two. 
And then there's another information is is asking whether you want this want to search approximate search or a exact match. Exact match, approximate. In this case, we don't go for an approximate because we need to match the code exactly, right? So we put false there and end. Then uh, you can see uh, 326. Here is 326. 326, the unit price is 25,000. Unit price is 25,000. So let me bring that there, right? So the formula is working here. Right, but I calculated is unit price. There is an issue in uh, using this uh, using this table or a V uh, uh, look table. V look table is always uh, um, let me put as a note there. Note V look function, V look function, or V look table. We look to table always should start. That's mean the first column. First column must be the one that we are searching. Can you get it? What I'm saying, say, let's say when I'm edit this one, this is the table that I have selected, not the entire table. Why? Because if you select entire table, then you need to search this one. But here, what we are searching is the barcode. So barcode must be the first column. Barcode must be the first column. Understood? So barcode must be the first column and enter. So the answer is coming. But if you want the pen drive, I need to do some adjustment here. So either you can adjust the original one or you just make an additional copy here. Right? Additional copy here. So now you can use a different format because it is starting from here and then goes on this side. So um, what I did is I adjusted this one. Let me put it in a different colors or something, right? Now uh, I can modify this formula. V uh, lookup, V lookup, what I'm looking for barcode, right? So I will put the barcode. And then what I am looking, which table I am looking, now I can put this table also, though it is not necessary, but I will put the both tables, right? So I will put entire table starting from barcode because what you are searching must be the first column. What you are searching is barcode, so this must be the first column, not this, one, right? So I have selected the table. Then which column index you are looking for? Item is in third column now. My item is in third column. so. Column index is three and exact match is false, right? So that uh, you get all the data given there. So now we will, let's check whether it is correct. Three, two, six. When you enter three, two, six, uh, item is scanner, price is 25,000, right? Item is scanner, price is 25,000. This one I did earlier, so I delete this one and uh, copy this one over here. So what I have to do is I need to do some uh, relative versus uh, absolute referencing using dollar marks, right? So when I copy this formula to here, right hand side, this C should be remain C, right? C should be remain C. So I will freeze this by pressing F4, uh, F4 uh, only, freezing C, only freezing C. So in front of C, I'm putting dollar sign by pressing F4. Then the table, when I go laterally or when I go downwards, the table must be table. There is no change. So complete uh, locking must be there. So I put both sides uh, dollar sign in the table and this one is correct. Now I enter this one. So if I copy this one here, uh, then what happens is I just copy, everything is remain same, and then I change to two, sorry. There it is, I change to two, right? So now I both formulas are correct. Now let me copy this formula throughout. And since there is no data, 
it's course uh, uh, not uh, error message, but we will put the numbers and this one. Right. Now, let me introduce another one because this writing this uh, barcode is a troublesome job, right? Here, copy paste. So there is no sense for that. So let's say now we have how many items of product we have. Um, let's number this one, two, three, and then double, sorry, three, and you double click on the corner, it will populate automatically. There are eight numbers, right? So there is another thing I'm trying to introduce here, data validation, data validation. So what is data validation? Go to data tab and then uh, there is a data validation. So under data validation, you click on that. Then there is a data validation pop-up comes. There are a lot of information here. So I don't want to go into the detail um data validation is a criterion so what you can enter what you can enter into a cell is limited right that's what the meaning so data validation meaning is um data entry data entry is limited so you are you are warning the people you can't just enter say, any number what you want because this must be a barcode this must be a barcode barcode so this must be matching with some format, some numbers, and so on. So that's why we want the data validation here. So let me select this one and go to data validation. And allowing what? Any value or any certain value, right? So I'm going to select um, a certain value. What is that certain value? This list, this particular list. So what I will do? A list. Which list? I will select the range here. I will select the range here. So the range is selected. And uh, then you say OK and enter, right? So now you can see here uh, the barcodes are given there. So what you select is say, 76 is selected. So automatically uh, the relevant uh, item will be selected. Uh, price will be selected. Likewise, you can go here and there. Let me copy the number format, this, this one, right? So similarly, if you select any cells, uh, the appropriate uh, product and the names and things will be coming, right? So now you can see here, scanner and the relevant price, the price and the item is taken from this table to here. Now you do your normal calculation, that is um, a unit price R, ah, one other thing. Uh, this uh, so earlier we multiplied this one by this one and put it here, right? This this one multiply this one, this one multiply this one, and then you double click um, and then get the answer. Uh, so shall I change this one? So you can use uh, you can use the array multiplication. What is array multiplication? You select the chair, uh, array, array where you want to enter the formula, and then you put. Uh, equal sign, right? You put the equal sign. Where I'm just selecting, I'm not using any formula, right? I'm not using any formula, this array into this array. I didn't say any formula here. I'm just multiplying array one with array two, array one with array two. Now, if I enter, what will happen? Only one cell gets that value where I was acting. So that is not what I want. So again, I select this one. Again, I select this one, equal sign. Uh, select the array into the second array. Now I'm pressing the array function, array formula, right? Array calculation. Control, shift, enter. Control, shift, enter. Control, shift, enter. So uh, we are learning a new thing. Uh, let me add here, uh, array, array calculation. Array calculation. To do any array calculation, what you have to do is, uh, after you enter the formula, you need to put um, control plus shift plus enter. Usually we just enter, right? 
So only for alloy calculations, what we have to do is uh, control shift enter. So you, you need to select where your array wanted and do a calculation and put the relevant value there. So instead of doing, so if you want to check whether you, uh, you have an array formula, uh, that uh, I will add you the hint there, uh, array formula usually when you ch check again, the array formulas will be within this um, uh, brackets, right? So let me check here. If I select this uh, cell, you can see not only formula, but there is this uh, bracket is also there. So if there is any cells uh, with the bracket, that means you should understand uh, they have used the array formula. They have used the array formula. You can easily do by multiplying also. Let me do that also. Uh, this into this one. And then drag this, the same answer. But here we are using array. Here we are using the multiplication product. Right. Uh, hope uh, that's okay with you. Uh, so now, uh, why this array became into picture? Ah, okay, okay. Uh, to calculate this one, right? Right. Right. Uh, so this is about the VLOOK function. So VLOOK function, there are three, three, certain conditions. One is the first column must be there and this one, right? Now there's a uh, there's a um, other way of uh, doing this one. Say, uh, let me copy and get thing. Let me copy entire thing and paste it again here, right? Uh, let me introduce a name range. Let me introduce the name range. Um, say you have a name range because in Excel, you can use your own name for cells and uh, ranges and everything, right? So that's convenient view. So let's say the method two, I'm using this name range. Uh, let me delete this one, clear everything. Now, I want to go with the name range. So this one, what I want to do is, I want to name this range as, uh, say, barcode, right? So let me say, I want to name this as a barcode, right? So there are, uh, there is a, there are uh, different methods to do. Uh, let me select a range. Let me select the range where you, you want. Then um, in the corner, you have this next to this uh, formula bar, you have this reference cell, right? So select that and override by your name, override by your name. So now you enter barcode, enter barcode, uh, the text, and then enter, right? Just any name. I'm just writing barcode. You, you can say something else or just code, whatever. So I enter. Now you see when you select, uh, select any cell, that particular cell reference is given here in the name box, right? In the name box, you will get only this one. But in addition, you have this, your name also now. Let's say when you select this only cell, this gives you the reference to your cell. But once you select the entire range, it's checked. It changed to barcode. What is the name you have given there? So you have already introduced a new name to the Excel. So now uh, your Excel file or Excel workbook is have a new name, but you have given. Similarly, I will put a unit price, right? Unit price. So let me copy this one. And I want to have this one as a unit price. Sorry, uh, names cannot have a space. So let me reduce the space and put it unit price. Right. Then uh, again, similarly, I wanted to put this as a item. Right. Uh, suppose once you created so many different names, you may be wonder why, uh, how I know what name I have given. So when you when you work with large set of data, sometimes you may get confused. Right. So in that case, what you can do is uh, you go to the data, uh, sorry, view, right? Uh, in the name range formula, 
right under formula tab one two three fourth tab and home insert page layout the formula tab go to this name manager control f3 name manager can you so when you click on the name manager uh, i have a lot of things there so don't worry uh, there are few things we are, what we have added now uh, one is the barcode second one is an item uh, there is another one we put it right uh, barcode item and the unit price where is the unit price here it is the unit price right so these are the three we have created now if you want to check whether that is correct what you can do is just uh, select this one and it shows uh, what is that range right so this is the range we have put unit price so let me click on the item here and then select this uh, editing button so it will show what is the item you selected right now let's say it's how it is easy to use right so now let me delete everything that we have and let go fresh right okay here what i want to do i want to do a um, drop down list go to data uh, data validation and the list instead of selecting a source now i have the uh, now i have the name range what is that name range barcode right so in earlier i selected the range right now i have a unique name which i have created so i put barcode now you enter there so you don't need to worry about where i start where i end and so you just put the barcode the barcode range is coming here because the excel is taking barcode as this range barcode as this range so let me select um, one one range this number format is in a different format let me put it uh, general why it is number number with no decimal yeah right uh, so now uh, i'm going to type the vlook function v look up v look up function what i am going to look for this one and the table right and the table so now this is my table and then uh, or shall we put a, a table also name easy so let's say this is my table table data table data so when you put the vlookup, vlookup function, what you search for is an index, uh, sorry, the barcode number. And the array, you don't need to select now. Let me put the name, table data. Here the Excel is giving you the, the hint because I have a name, table data. So you just double click, the table data will be selected automatically. I don't need to write the range and so on, right? table data then column index item is first column second column third column so item is third column and uh, exact match is false so you get this one similarly you copy this one and check sorry uh, sorry i need to freeze this one otherwise uh, otherwise the c is changing right okay right now my unit price range is a second range so i put two here and then this one so let me copy paste and select few sorry the data validation was not copied to all data validation do you want to extend the data validation to these yes okay right so let me select some product here right so then put the summation there the total sum is this one right so we have learned on uh, array uh, plus named range name range and the data validation and an array 
array there are a lot of things that can be done but uh, we will introduce a little by little uh, uh, few functions hello can you see my screen yes sir, yes sir. Uh, there was a message we can't see the screen no sir not issue right okay so this about the data validation you might remember this uh, this similar calculation we have done in the day one right uh, given the marks of uh, different students and uh, uh, range is given a b c d a and so on and we have uh, estimated the grades if you go back i have given day one 2.2 a1 2.2, A1 2.2, this one, right? Here we have used the if condition to calculate this one, if condition to calculate this one. Now we have uh, identified this uh, uh, VLOOKUP function, right? So you can use um, VLOOKUP for this one, right? So this is the original question. So this B lookup will not work with uh, this uh, text space. So I have converted to a number range. Also, I have converted the range into upside down. That's mean filtered, uh, uh, filtered uh, or sorted according to the uh, uh, smallest to largest. I have adjusted this one. Now let me say B lookup. B lookup. B lookup function. What is we are going to look is 57. And then uh, what is the table we are looking for? Because I my looking is marks. So marks should be the first column. So then the format is correct. So I'm taking this as my table and freeze that table or a lock the table with the dollar marks. And then it's asking for a sorry. We look up function, right? It's asking for the index. Which index I want? Grade. Grade is in the second column. So number two. Only difference is, uh, let me put the exact match. Let me put exact match. That is not correct, but let me put exact match and enter. Exact match, uh, searching for 57 here. Searching for 57, 57 is not there, so it's creating an error, right? That's correct, right? Because uh, there is no 57. So instead of false, what I'm going to do, true. That's it, approximate match, approximate match. And now if you copy paste, simply it will give you that uh, answer. The answer what we got from if, and if condition from the last class, that is day one is given here for comparison, the same answer is coming, right? Same answer is coming. So what is the logic behind this? The VLOOK function, when you say, uh, when you say this as a approximate, when you say this as an approximate, it will take anything, uh, say for example, uh, what is A? A is 75. So anything equal to 75, above 75 will be considered. Anything above 70, sorry, equal and above 75 will considered as A in the lookup function, right? So that is the that is the logic behind. So if you know the logic behind the B lookup, that logic can be applied to here to find out this range. Sorry, there was a call. Um, okay, have you understood this one, this logic? Uh, let me check, let me check. Um, let me check uh, this uh, 72. Instead of 72, let me put 75. 
right 75 75 a 76 a 74 b why 74 b because it's uh, searching for but then uh, a is 74 right a is 74 uh, sorry, A is 75. So 74 become B. Because anything beyond, it will be considered. Anything equal or beyond, it will be considered. Anything less, that goes to the second category, right? So that's the that, that's how this B look uh, approximate function can be used in selecting some ranges, right? So that's, a, that's another uh, trick that we can use uh, instead of using these if conditions. Okay, finally, uh, there are a lot more to go, but anyway, let's see. Yeah, uh, let me take up uh, uh, this data. This is another data. Um, say, uh, sales representative. And can anybody say how many data are in this uh, data? Uh, sorry, how many rows are in this data? How many rows in this data? 3.1 example. Hello. Uh, okay. Thousand. Uh, how many columns are in the data? Similarly. Forty-one, is it? Control shift uh, left arrow. Control shift left arrow. Ah, uh, this is where I told you no. Uh, okay, interesting. Uh, there's a one answer forty-one. There's another answer fifty-one. Uh, fifty-one is uh, somewhat okay. Why? Because um, the first one we don't need to consider. Because that is the that is the label now. So the data is actually starting from column B. So if you select uh, control shift uh, arrow, control shift arrow, it stops somewhere, right? So that's why I told you if there is an empty cell, you need to keep pressing the arrow until you reach the end. So now I have reached the end, sixteen thousand three hundred eighty-three uh, column. So now I go back. Uh, Pressing control, control shift and uh, left arrow. Pressing control shift and left arrow. Then you can see uh, how many data I have, 50. So that's mean my data set is uh, 50 into 1000, right? Including header, 1001 and 51, whatever, right? So my data set is 1000 into 50. That is, uh, you need to first know about your data. Uh, then uh, there is a second. There are a few more things you need to know. Uh, first, you need to know what are these entries, right? So, say for an example, re sales representative day one, day two, day three, and so on. So these are say product IDs, product IDs. Now some information are missing, obviously missing, right? But when you look at uh, the whole picture in a very holistic view, you may not capture that. You may not capture that. So when you have data given to you, uh, there are basic checks you have to do. Are there any empty cells? Are there any empty cells available? Are there unique format is maintained? Say, uh, say in this case, let me say, uh, let me say that um, the product ID must have a four-digit number. Product ID must have a four-digit number. Uh, how do you check that uh, everywhere four, di four digit is there or are there any deviation? How do we? So if, uh, if your company or an organization is giving you a very 
bulky data or a big data, right? Uh, then you need to quickly get, go back to the organization. Come on, um, you have this much of an error. Uh, so I can't work with this data. Uh, or it is 50% uh, is tolerable. Uh, the balance 50, I'm going to throw it away or maybe use it in a different way. So these are some kind of a initial decision you need to take with your data, right? So to do that, to do that, there are several tools available, but uh, conditional formatting is one of the best tools. Conditional formatting is the best tool. So what conditional formatting is doing is uh, you give a condition and check whether it satisfies or not. So for a representation, for a presentation purpose, it doesn't give you any value, right? Like, like uh, two plus three is equal four. Uh, so it's it's uh, do some calculation and giving you a value, right? But conditional formatting is nothing about calculation. You can do some calculation, but it's a formatting. It's a presenting tool, right? How do you present the data? So let's say very first one, we need to identify the blank cells. We need to identify the blank cells, right? So let me first, um, there, are, there are a couple of ways to do. Um, we are approaching to the end of this time. I don't know. Maybe let's uh, let finish this one, then continue later. Um, it, under your home button, under your home button, go to the last menu, which is an editing tool. Under the editing tool, you have uh, this find or select, right? Have you located in your Excel? Find and select. Yes. Have you located the find and select tool? Yes. Yes. Right. There are there are a lot of uh, items there. Uh, maybe uh, let's go. Um, directly what we wanted, but later we can play around this uh, with this one. Uh, let I, I'm going to go to special, right? Find and select, under find and select, I'm going to go to select, right? Once you select the go to select, there are a lot of options available. Whether you want to go to a comment, whether you want to go to a constant, formula, blanks, etc., etc., there are so many things available, right? Uh, for an example, I, without doing anything, I'm just uh, type, uh, I'm saying, okay. So if I have a comment in my cell, it will show. Otherwise, it will give no, no comments in this sheet. So let me say, okay. So the Excel will come back and say that no cell were found with a comment. Similarly, in this case, what I want, I want a blank cells, right? I want to show the blank cells. So select the blanks, go to special and select the blanks, and then say OK. So what Excel will do is, Excel will select all the blank cells in the data, sorry, all the blank cells in the, in the Excel sheets, right? So everything is selected. But only thing is like uh, even beyond the uh, range what we want. OK. Now, you cannot go back to, you cannot go back to your, uh, say, line manager or a company manager or a process manager and say that, uh, you see, this is, this is how uh, your data is, right? Because this is only the selection. This is only the selection. Once you select somewhere else, uh, it goes off, vanishes. So you can't do anything, right? So what you have to do is you have to make it permanent. So what we do is go to special, go to blanks, and select, right? Now you go to your formatting tool, uh, which is under, in the, under the font and say, I'm putting some color. I'm trying to put a color. Let me put some red related because it's a blank now. Uh, so let me put a light red over there. Right. Now you can see here, you can see here, it's easy to present to this to anybody. Say, this is your data. So you can, you can see this much of uh, amount of data. Now we have a lot. 
but at least um, even there are one or two when you do some calculation is problematic, right? So before you start analyzing the data or use the data, this kind of an initial check must be done. So you need to check where, where any, anywhere there is a blank. If the blank is allowable, I mean, some set of data, the blank is allowable. Say, for example, uh, a particular person may not sell anything on that particular day. Having a blank is okay, then it's okay. But there are certain uh, scenarios you cannot have a blank. Everything must be filled. So that means uh, data is not uh, fully correct, right? So this kind of, uh, say, uh, this one is uh, better to have. But now, uh, using this uh, go to special and uh, blank and formatting uh, is, uh, you can have uh, now, uh, this one is already colored. So now I have to revert back because uh, after you represent, presented this one, I don't want to keep this blank continuously, right? So you need to have a certain, certain changes. So for an example, let's say, uh, I'm talking to the to relevant people. So I say I'm talking to the representative number five and say that day three, there is an empty, is that correct? So no, he was uh, looking his uh, diary or somewhere and then telling uh, this is the number. So when I put the number, it still remain colored. Why? Because you made your, um, you made your um, formatting permanent. You made your formatting permanent. So this way, uh, this uh, first tool is useful. Go to and make the format is useful, but then uh, it's difficult to revert back. Difficult to revert back. So I will undo this one, what I did. Right. I'm going for a different uh, for this one. So let me select my entire, entire table. So and go down. Right, I'm keep pressing the down key and up. So I have selected the entire entire data, right? I have selected the entire data. Now I am going to um, entire data, and now I am now I am going to conditional formatting under the home tab. You can see here there is a conditional formatting. There are a lot of items again there under conditional formatting. You can go different colors, different icons, different um, uh, dif different uh, bar charts type, and so on. Uh, let me go to a new, a fresh one, right? New rule. Under new rule, so new rule, you have again a different option to select which rule you want. So uh, select, let me select based on the for cell value, right? Format only cell that contains what is in the cell, within the cell, right? Contain cell value uh, before that. Here you can see uh, specified text, date of, uh, dates occurring, blanks, non-blanks, errors, no errors, and so on. Now what we want to look for is a blanks, right? So what I can do is I can select the blank. So now what is, uh, the, the Excel is going to do is, if there is a blank cell, then it's ask uh, what is the preview you want, how you want to represent this one. So let me go to the format. You can change the numbers, you can change the font colors, you can change the borders, you can change this. So usually the filling is the best option. So as I did earlier, so let me go for a, some kind of, uh, let me go for a red color one um, with a slightly light red. Okay, this is the color I'm chosen and say okay and okay. Now what I have done is I have again did the same, but uh, using a conditional format. Now let me go back to the customer, the sorry, the salesperson again right and going one by one so i sit with the representative one come on your data has some error can i know you from your diary or logbook uh, day three what has happened he looks at it and say again uh, okay one three five six uh, yes and given you the number once you enter that is clear this is the beauty of conditional formatting so if you delete anything that automatically indicate that is blank 
if you put anything, it's indicate that is non-blank. Correct? Understood? Is is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Right. Now my second condition. My second condition is say there are uh, um, I didn't uh, tell you the text tool, right? Let me introduce in this part. How do we know that uh, this particular how many characters? Anybody? Say, I want to check this. Uh, how many how many characters or how many numbers are there? In this case, four numbers. But in this case, five numbers. Mm -hmm. Uh, so how do you how do you tell the Excel to count this number of characters in a cell? Anyone knows about it? It's a function. Under text function, you can find this one. Let me show you under the FX. Uh, FX, you type uh, you type uh, length. You type length and enter. Why it's not coming? Uh, len function, right? When you, if you want a uh, length of a text, you you choose the text function called len, right? So what I am going to do is, if I put len, that's for length, and select any cell and enter it will give you an answer. So when I copy paste this one, you can see here mostly the length of the cell here, it is 444 and this one is five. So that means something is wrong there because my product IDs are four digits, but some numbers entered as five digits, maybe a mistake, but we don't know which one is mistaken. Uh, whether the three was additionally added or six was additionally added or five was additionally added, we don't know. So we need to, uh, we can't correct it uh, if there is no logic. If there is a logic, we can uh, correct that. Otherwise, we need to go back to the source of the data, right? But at least we know, we, you need to understand, okay, whether this is uh, four digit, uh, sorry, the four digits or five digits. So if it is five digits, you indicate that with a different color or a different format, right? So how do we do that? Uh, Ishara has raised it. Maybe the time is up. Uh, Ishara, Ishara, please. Ishara? What is it? You, you, are, uh, you are reminding about the time, right? No, no, it's a mistake from my Ah, OK. Uh, so what I want is um, if the, uh, uh, if the uh, length of the text is uh, more than uh, or more than four or not equal to four, uh, what I want to do is I uh, wanted to give some warning, right? If I want to do that, let me go back to my uh, conditional data. And now I have already a, um, uh, a rule. So I go to manage the rule, right? Sorry. I go to manage the rule. So this is the current uh, region I, where I have my conditional formatting for non-blank cells, or sorry, the blank cells. So now I want to add the new rule, right? I want to add the new rule, say new rule. And uh, it may take some time for you to explore all these, but uh, anyway, try to, try to see. So let, what I'm going to do is using a formula here. Earlier I used the cell which is contained. Now I'm going to use a formula. If um, length, right? Length, um, let me select uh, the very first row and the very first data, sorry. Very first data that is, uh, B3. I don't want to use any uh, signs over there, so let me delete. So if uh, len B3 is equal, if the length B3 
greater than equal, uh, sorry, greater than greater than four, then I am going to put some other formatting. Let's say, shall I choose this one? Okay. So which one you want to stop? Uh, blank or that you can decide. Let me put it in this one. Uh, range is not correct. So let me select the range and put it here. The same range I want to apply. Apply this one. Okay. Now what you can see here, you can see wherever wherever the, the number of digits is uh, more than four, uh, you are highlighting with a different color. So with this kind of uh, this one, uh, you can easily uh, easily represent your data, tell your data source of the people, come on, uh, look at this, these are the, some of the problem we have, right? I think uh, the range has a problem uh, because why it is only in this range? Uh, can you check? This range, range is correct, right? B3 to AY, range is correct. Edit the rule. Sorry, edit the rule. Uh, uh, what is that? B3, right? Yeah, that's correct. Sorry, there was a mistake. Right. So when wherever the number of digits is more than four, you will be alarmed that uh, these are the cell you need to look after separately. Right. So these uh, these kind of a uh, um, conditional formatting will give you some idea before you start your data to be analyzed because you need to first clear. What is this data? Whether it is in the correct format, whether there is a non-blanks, whether there is an extremes, whether there is an outliers, all this has to be cleared first before we analyze. So there a lot can be done. Uh, so we, we can stop here. I think uh, the, um, what is our time budget, uh, Dilan? Uh, few things there. Yeah. Right. Uh, let me stop at here. Let me stop at here. But uh, I think uh, compared to day one, today the interaction was a little less. Maybe I don't know. Uh, did I did I manage to go through or it, was it fast? Right. Um, Dylan, are you there? So I'm here. I'm Buneka. Uh... So ah. if we are if we are winding up the session, I would like to say very thank you very much for your assistance during this uh, workshop series, and I would like to remember participants that the next session will uh, will be held on next Wednesday, from two p.m. to uh, five p.m. And uh, so the yes today was today it was participation was a little bit less, but I I hope that others will also join for the last session on the Excel. Uh, workshop series. Thank you, sir. Right. Um, uh, right. Okay. So there are there are a lot more a lot more there, but I think uh, the uh, keep it in mind because some uh, some of you may be wanted uh, some specific area to be go into detail. Some may be first time learners, so maybe they may be wondering uh, or maybe find it little bit difficult to cope with the uh, time and the content. Uh, so don't worry. Uh, if you don't catch it up, uh, take your time and do it. Uh, if you don't really understand also, don't worry. At least you have made aware that these are there. Uh, so I, my, my, my worry is like um, there are some array formulas so once I'm trying to do. Uh, with that also and uh, further some, uh, some uh, uh, into the data, Plus, um, plus this macro. I'm worrying that macro whether can be done 
within tomorrow within the third day uh, how do we how do we handle that because one of the comment uh, today i received from the organizers some are looking for macro also uh, how do we handle that uh, need and the time The third, uh, sorry, the the next series is already planned, or how? Do, how what is the state from your side? Uh, so after the Excel series, which means after next week's session, uh, mm -hmm. then the plan is to go for the SPSS session with Ms. Upali. Uh, mm -hmm. But but even we can little bit like uh, change it if you want another one more session. Uh, we can arrange that as maybe, well. Maybe we will do like this. Um, maybe I will. Uh, I will touch base on a very, uh, uh, a very introductory level. Uh, those who specifically wanted in that level, uh, we will have a separate session later. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so maybe um, maybe within the given time, so we will be touching on different uh, tools and different techniques, but uh, we may not be able to go into the detail. That might be that is my my worries. But anyway, uh, anyway, this is at least uh, some awareness um, we are making for the first time uh, for everyone. Um, batch by batch, batch wise, uh, we have done uh, tried uh, several series in the past. For the first time we are having um, overall coverage so uh, something is better than nothing right uh, so i hope uh, i will uh, again as i did in the past i will send you this file what i have worked today um, and also if you have uh, worked with me uh, probably you can send that to me but uh, i have some difficulties in uh, uh, keeping the all the files because uh, sometimes this subject you are maintaining is different uh, so at least can you start your file uh, with the naming today's date also put it in the same format 2021 08 uh, 12 and then you start your name and the index sorry index and the name index uh, index and name keep this in the file name keep this in the file name of your excel also keep this in the uh, email subject otherwise it's very difficult because um, uh, i'm receiving so many emails per day and i may miss your one so email subject email subject also keep the same so your excel file will have the same dot excel sx and your subject file name also same so if you can maintain that that would be helpful for me uh, so those who have done that with me please send your excel files uh, just to just to have an idea whether you have gone through um, anyway after a couple of days back uh, i will send my one uh, so that you can compare with your one later thank you thank you sir thank you